The Bible says that they are commandments. And this is, how many believe this is the Word of God? Yeah. This is God's Word that came straight from the throne of God. You know what God said? He said if we don't abide by this Word, live by this Word, walk yeah. by this Word, we're not going to make heaven our home. I believe God says what He meant. And I believe yeah. He means what He says. You know, sometimes we just don't like to get over stuff. Oh, 
group. Amen. <laughs> Think about it, church. What if we all come in here despair, discouraged, down and out, and with no hope? Amen. No hope of anything, Sister Sandra. No hope of heaven. No hope of dying and leaving this world and going to a better place. And just say, what you feel? What kind of a meeting would we have without hope? What other kind of a meeting would we come in here tonight? Everybody scratching their head and wondering if God was real. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What kind of a church would we have if nobody in the church had faith? Now let me ask you something. What kind of church we have without love? Because the Bible says the most important of these three is love. Yeah. So if you can't go to heaven without hope, you can't go to heaven without faith, you sure can't go without the greatest of all three of them, which is love. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we need more of. That's what the world needs more of. Yeah. Is love. You know what makes people cold and bitter and angry? You ever see people in such a day and time that are so cold and bitter and angry? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Especially people working in the public. You know what I'm talking about. People just seem to be unfriendly, don't they? Yep. Just seem to be bitter and angry over nothing. And sometimes you wonder, what did I do to them? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't what you've done to them. It's what they've done to themselves for not forgiving people along the way. You know, unforgiveness is just like a cancer. It might not eat up the outside of your flesh, but it'll devour the inside of you and you'll become more and more bitter and more and more angry and more and more corrupt until after a while you'll just be like that person that you're wondering what was wrong with them. Amen. It's because they had no forgiveness in their heart. I know what I'm talking about is being there, Sister Sandra. I remember when this one would do something wrong and that one would do something wrong. And then when somebody else would do something wrong, I remember what everybody done wrong. <laughs> Just not forgiving nobody. Yeah. And all it was doing was hurting me. That it don't hurt that person that you hold a grudge against none at all. But I'll tell you what it will do to you. It will destroy you. It will kill you if you don't forgive that person and learn to love that person the way that God says to them. Praise Lord. You know how many churches have been busted up? How many relationships? How many marriages? How many friendships have been busted up because of their unforgiveness and not letting love abide in its proper place? That's right, brother. That's right. Love. Yes, amen. Foundation of Christianity. It wasn't the nails that hung Jesus Christ on that cross. And it wasn't the wood that helped Him there. It wasn't those people. It was the love, praise God. Yeah. It was the love that He had for those people. It was the love that He had for His Father. Yeah. God expects us to love. Amen. What is that I'm feeling right now? I don't have a clue. But God wants us to love. Amen. To love. Yes, He does. You know, sometimes we just got to get over it. I appreciate you, Sister LeVar. You know what? That blessed my heart, Sister that really blessed my heart. Because I've had to go to people that I didn't didn't really do nothing to. But the Lord wanted me to make a confession. And I said, but God, what I have. The Bible says this, Brother Derek, if our brother had all against us before we come to the altar to bring our gift, let's make things right with our brother. It doesn't say we have all against him. He said if he has an all against us. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying, sir? Praise the Lord. Well, I'll preach it anyway. Praise Turn with me to Matthew chapter uh, Matthew uh, 22 and verse 36. Bless the Lord. Matthew 22, verse 36. It says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And I like the way he said that. The question he asked, what's the greatest commandment? There's a bunch of them. There's ten of them. You can't murder. You can't lie. You can't rob. You can't steal. You can't commit adultery. And all these things mm -hmm. are good things. You can't go there if you commit murder. Not going to heaven, committing murder. You can't be a murderer and enter into heaven. You can't be a thief and continue to be a thief and live as a thief and make it to heaven. There's a commandment there that yeah. says you can't do these things. Not a suggestion, but a commandment. Amen. We don't abide by this word, live by this word, walk in this word. I said it want to go. And everybody in here said, Amen. So we're not going to make heaven our home. The Bible says, Thou shalt not. And that's what it means. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yep. Thou shalt not do these things. And all these commandments God expects us to keep. I want to ask you something. Look beside the person that's sitting beside you. Would it even enter your mind to hurt that person? Yeah. 
Amen. Glory Probably God. not. Probably not. And as far as a, as far as a, the Bible says, "Thou shalt not murder." Look at your brother and sister beside you. Could you imagine entertaining a thought against the sister beside you or the brother beside you as committing murder? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says any man that hated his brother is a murderer. You wouldn't even think about committing murder. But at the same time, if there's somebody you got all against that you haven't forgiven, that you can't love, you know what you're doing? The Bible looks at you, God looks at you, just the same as He would upon a murderer. The Bible says no murderer is going to enter the kingdom of God. Isn't that what it says? What it says. Praise the Lord. Listen to what it says. It says, Master, everybody felt it, I hope. It says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. First commandment. Very first commandment. Mm -hmm. The greatest commandment. Yep. Love the Lord with everything inside of you. And he went on and said, and it's in red right here, this is what Jesus said. This is the first and great commandment. In other words, he was saying the most important commandment of all is this, that you must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And verse 39 says, and the second, second greatest commandment says, is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Thy shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When you feel like it, when you want to, when they're good to you, when they treat you right, when everything's honky donky and all. No, no, that ain't what it says. It said, Thy shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Second greatest commandment. Now look, these are the two greatest commandments of all of them. Y'all agree with me? Amen. You know what it said? Yeah. Okay, we know we can't get there if we're liars. Right. The Bible says no liar. A liar shall have their pardon. Like fire into what it says. Right. We know that if we're a liar, we're not going to heaven. If we're an adulterer, if we're a murderer, or if, or, or, or if we're a thief, we're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But what did it say? The two greatest of all was to love the Lord God first with everything inside of you. And then the second one was like it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You know you can't get there by not keeping the third commandment or the fourth commandment or the right. fifth commandment or the sixth or the seventh or the eighth or the ninth or the tenth. Then what you going to do about the first two? You're not going to get there for sure if you don't keep the greatest of all. And the greatest of all is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all everything inside of you. And the second one is to love your neighbor. As yourself. Amen. Amen. You know, when I get cold, I'm putting a coat on. Yeah. When I get hungry, I'm going to look for something to eat. If you've got a neighbor that's hungry and you're able to feed him and you won't, are you really loving him? If you know that there's a person in need and you are able to help them and you don't, and you know what that need that that person has, but you just overlook it and go on about your way, you haven't been a neighbor to him and you haven't kept the second commandment, which is love thy neighbor as thyself. Not only are we supposed to love our neighbors, but the Bible teaches us also to love our enemies. To love our enemies. To do good to those that despitefully use us. And I cannot find a place that I'd really like to go to right now. And I hope I have a lost it. Because it's very important that I read this absolutely next. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. Everybody there? Hurry up, I want to preach. No, I'm just joking, y'all. <laughs> Still love me. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have to overlook each other's faults sometimes. We have to get over it. We have to get past it. We just have to forgive. You know, sometimes that's hard to do. But it, but you know what? The Bible says with Christ Jesus, we can do all things. Yes. I remember a time, Brother George, and I know Brother Derek and Sister Sandra know this, but some of y'all might not. There was a time when I just didn't like Brother Daniel too much. Yeah. And Brother Derek calls me up. We're fixing to have a revival a few years back or so. And he called me up and he says, Brother Johnny, what you doing? I said, I'm working. He said, well, I need to talk to you about something. I said, oh, go ahead. You remember, Brother Derek? Yeah. 
I was working. He said, I need to talk to you about something. I said, go ahead. I had a kind of an idea what it was anyhow, but I just wanted to ask. And, he said, and I said, go ahead. And he said, well, you know we're having a revival, don't you? I said, yes, sir. I know we're having a revival. I, he said, are you coming? I said, who's preaching? I just felt the Holy Ghost for some reason. Somebody in here needs to let go. Yeah, come on, Somebody needs to let go of something right now. You need to let go of something you're holding in your heart. I don't know who you are or who you're sitting at, but I know what I felt when I said that. Yeah. I felt the Holy Ghost run all over me. Come on. I said, who's preaching? Because I had an altar against you. Right. You had done something, not something real bad or anything like that, but you had done something to hurt my feelings. Come on. You had done something, that, and, he, and he made a mistake. And he done something to hurt my feelings, and I didn't want to forgive him, Brother Derek. And let me just go and tell you, dog, the devil can't mess with you, monkey with your mind. Let me just go ahead and tell you what happened. One time, long time ago, back eight, ten, about ten years ago now, I guess it's been, we was at church out at Brother Dan's church, and, and, and Stephen was cutting up with some girls back there. He was young, you know how, and just flirting, I guess, with them girls more or less, and they was kind of keeping up a little ruckus back there. And Brother Daniel was trying to preach. Finally, he just looked back there and he said, Hey, Stephen, come get on the front seat. But he only said, Stephen, didn't say the rest of them. That bothered me, Brother Dort, because he's my son and I love him. And I said, The way I look at it, if he'd tell every one of them, say, Yeah, every one of y'all, get up here on the seat. I went not know about And I thought, Oh, no, wait a minute. Now, you done got my attention. You're messing with my son. And that hurt. It, it, it hurt at the time. It made me have an all. I'm just saying, sharing this with y'all because I felt long ago when I said so. Somebody here has got an all to get somebody. you got to let it go. You got to. And we're going to get rid of it tonight. Yes. We're going to get rid of it tonight. We're going to let it get, get out of here tonight. Whatever it is. you got to forgive that person that you have an all against. You're going to have to let it go. Sometimes it ain't always easy. But sometimes all you got to do is hear God and then it just... Pray. Let me tell you what happened to me. I held a grudge against a brother that I now love for eight long years. Brother Derek said, are you coming to service tonight? When I asked him who was preaching, he said, Brother Daniel. I said, I don't think so. Ain't that what I said? I don't think I'm coming. He said, well, I think you need to. He kind of got on to me a little bit. Kind of like a daddy does a son. You know. He said, well, I think you need to be there. We are having a revival. You need to back the church up. You ought to come at least one night. I said, well, I'll think. He said, will you come? I said, I'll think about it. And in the back of my mind, I'd already thought about it. <laughs> and I'd already thought, I ain't coming because I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. He done hurt my feelings a long time ago and they've been hurt for eight years. <laughs> sometimes we don't want to forgive. That's the problem. Yeah. Come on, bro. I said, sometimes the problem is we don't want to forgive. That's Praise the Lord. Right. That's the problem. <laughs> problem with me was Brother there the Derek was not Brother Daniel. The problem was me. I was the one with a problem. He had no problem with me. <laughs> My problem was I just didn't want to forget it. Amen. I, I, I thought to myself, you know what? God, you forgive me a whole bunch of times. He got one more shot. I done made up my mind. You blow it this time, brother. That's it. It's over with. I ain't come listening to you. I want to talk to you. I don't want to have nothing else to do with you. You got one more shot. You mess up. That's it. Man, isn't that a terrible, terrible, terrible... Let me just go ahead and tell you. That's not right. right. <laughs> Come on. That wasn't right. Come on. Do I need to tell you who was planting those thoughts in my mind or you can't figure it out on your own? Let me just go ahead and say it wasn't God. Amen. Because you know God wants us, when we come into unity, when we come into faith of the unity of the Spirit and the love of God, then God's going to work. Where there's division, there's all kinds of problems. Right. God don't want division. The devil's the one that divides and subtracts. God adds and multiplies. Can you say amen? amen. God doesn't subtract and God doesn't, doesn't divide. But He adds and He multiplies. Praise the Lord. If you see in something that's been division, if you see in something right. taken away, it ain't God doing it, it's the devil. That's right. Come on. Whoa! Do you hear what I'm saying, people? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. We got to learn to love. I said we got to learn to love. Praise amen. the Lord. We got to love our friends. We got to love we got to love our enemies. And the Bible says if we have love, we have God. But if we have not love, oh, we have not God. So we better learn to love. Because if you don't learn to forgive, he that can't forgive, God's not going to forgive. He said, he that forgiveth his brother that trespasses against him, God will also forgive him his trespasses. Praise the Lord. So what does that tell you? You holding a grudge against somebody, maybe that's why you got a problem tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. I'm going to preach it anyway. Whether I come back to the man or another, I don't, I'll do 
youth like I used to. I'm preaching to the birds. I listen to the frogs, sisters. And they're done many a time. Rounding around the lake just preaching to the frogs and the birds. Amen. None of them ever said a word, brother. Jim. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He never read you. He talked about me, raised up, called the phone to another bird and said, Hey, man, I've never said something in my little life. Praise the Lord. They just turned right on away. No. Praise the Lord. I said, Well, he got one more shot. I'm going to church tonight. Amen. I said, But. I said, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to sit down on that back row. I'm going to cross my legs, cross my arms, and I ain't looking at him. I said, I ain't looking at him. Don't want him to speak to me. And I ain't shaking hands with him. And I ain't greeting him. I've done decided this is the way it's going to be. Somebody needs to hear me tonight. I'm talking to somebody here. Praise the Lord. You ain't going to heaven till you let go of that grudge. <laughs> well, Did you hear what I said? <laughs> I said, you can't take that to heaven with you. Praise the Lord. Heaven's a mighty big place, I know. But you're going to might have to live there with that person throughout eternity. Yeah. <laughs> what you going to do then? <laughs> Amen. Stay on the other side of heaven, stand away from them. <laughs> you ain't going to heaven like that. You really ain't. <laughs> I sat back there, Brother Derek, and I done made up my mind what I was and what I was going to do. And the Lord spoke to me, and if I've ever heard Him a day in my life, I heard Him that time. I could have understood Him more clearly if He'd have spoke to me audibly, which it wasn't audibly, but I heard Him that clear and that loud. He said, get up and go to the men's room. I said, yes, sir. You ought to do what the Lord said to do. You really ought to. Thy shalt. Doesn't say if you feel like it. Doesn't say if you want to. Doesn't say if they're good to you. Doesn't say if they buy you a bag of groceries. It says thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And your neighbor is not necessarily just one little side of you. Your neighbor may live 25 or 50 miles down the road. Your neighbor might be in Huntsville or Nashville or somewhere. Yeah. If anybody you come in contact with. I've been made up my mind though. The Lord spoke to me, get up and go to the men's room. And I went in there, and I stood in there, and I said, okay, Lord, here I am. What is it? And just like He just walked right in there with me and just stood up to me face to face and said, I want you to forgive that man. And for some reason, Sister Sandra, something just came over me, and I said, yes, sir, done. Just that simple. I said, it's done. And you know what? I ain't saying this for any other reason except to give glory and praise and honor to God. But I came and I shook his hand, I hugged his neck, I told him I loved him. And not only when the service was over, I gave enough money to buy supper. Amen. <laughs> Man. And you know what? I ain't had a problem with Brother Daniel since. Amen. Amen. You know what I had to do? I had to forgive. I had to forgive, Brother Derek. You know what? I sure am glad you called me up Praise and Lord. made me come to church. Man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I learned a lesson, church. We have to forgive. We have to just let it go. I had no idea that he was going to... And that's the very same night that he came up behind the pulpit and he said, I made a mess in church. I'll straighten it out in church. That's exactly what he said. And he apologized to me that yes, night. He and apologized to Stephen. Stephen wasn't here, but he'd already seen him earlier that day in Walmart and already apologized to Stephen. And he apologized to me right in front of everybody. And that made me just have that much more respect for him. But I'd already forgiven him. <laughs> I'd still body suffer if he had done it, Brother Derek. Amen. Right. You know why? Because that bitterness and that anger and that hurt and that frustration and that torment went bye bye. Yeah. And the next thing I know, I found myself reaching in my billfold, handing him $20. Glory to God. I didn't tell you all that, but for one reason. Right. Amen. So that you would understand what I'm trying to say. Right. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I don't know who you are that's got an all against somebody here tonight, but we're, I'll tell you what, we want to pray for you before we get yeah. out of here. Amen. I know sometimes, look here, we all get hurt. Let me tell you something. There have been times that <laughs> Brother Derek and I have not always seen eye to eye. 
Right, brother. Right. But you love me, don't you? Amen. And I love you too, brother. There's times that me and Sister Sandra have not always seen eye to eye. But ain't a good thing we can forgive one another and love each other anyway. Amen. See, we all going to have shortcomings. Right. You're not going to always be able to please everybody. And everybody ain't going to always That's please right. you. Yep. But we got to learn to walk this walk together. In the unity and in the love of the Spirit of God. Can somebody say amen? Yeah, amen. You know what the world needs more of? But the church needs more of it, I think, sometimes. Yeah, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to learn how for we need to learn how to forgive one another. And we need to learn how to keep on loving each other. Yeah. Even in the good times and even in the bad times. Right. Even when they like you and even when they don't. Amen. Even when they agree with you and even when they don't. Even when things are going good between you and even when they ain't. Yes. The Bible says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor when things are good. When he brings you a bag of groceries. When you're feeling pretty good about him. No, no, no. It says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Period. That's what it says. Right. End of story. Try to get to heaven with that you ain't going without love. Man. Wake up you ain't going without love. Wake up I ain't holding love. Right. Now about it, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the reason Jesus Christ came to this world. Love is the reason He ministered here for 33. He was here 33 and a half years. Love is the reason He hung on Calvary and died for our sins. Love. Amen. Because He loved us, Sister Sandra. And it wasn't because we was good enough either. Can you still love somebody when they ain't good enough? Then you need a little bit more God. Come on. Yes. Boy, that's good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes it's going to feel like they ain't they don't deserve your love. <laughs> sometimes it's going to feel that way. Man. But you got to love them. Anyway. Listen to what it says. Where, did, where was I going? Does anybody know? First John. First John chapter 2, verse 9. Is that what I said a while ago? Yes, said First John. Okay, First John chapter two, verse nine. Here's what it said: He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. Yep. He that doesn't love his brother still in darkness. Bible said that. I didn't say it. That's uh, a hard pill to swallow, ain't it? Especially if somebody here got a hold against somebody else. Amen. I'm gonna read this to this certain again. person here tonight. He that saith he is in the light, and you are, and you know you are, but you hate your brother. But it says here, is even in darkness, even until now. There's something you need to understand. There's some light that you need to, to, to walk into and to let go of that grudge. He that loveth his brother abides in the light, and there's none occasion to stumble in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, Knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Hatred make you blind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hatred make you yeah. blind to what? Make you blind to the truth. Right. What is the truth? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Love your enemies. Feed them. Clothe them. Do good to them that curse you and that speak wrong about you. Yes. You know what? Our ways are not God's ways and God's ways are not our ways. But the only way we're going to get to heaven is doing it God's way. Yeah. Not our way. You're right, brother. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Glory to God. Look at chapter 3, verse 10, 1 John. It said, In this the children of God are manifest. This is how you're going to know them, in other words. And the children of the devil. Whether whosoever doeth not righteousness is not a God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Did that really say that? Can I have something against somebody and still be a Christian? Nope. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should, y'all yeah, say that with me, that we should what? Love one another. Amen. I don't see nothing else after that another to y'all but a period. <laughs> nothing but a period. No buts. Just a period. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from life unto death because we despise the one set beside us. We despise the one that we go to church with. No, we know that we have passed from life unto death because we love yeah. one another.
We know that we have passed up from life unto death because we can sing good, because we can preach good, because we can speak in tongues good. No, but because we love one another. Amen. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. death. Amen. You see what that says? If you don't love your brother, you're dead. That ain't good. It says you're abides in death. Isn't that what it says? You're abides in death. You're walking in death. You're in darkness. Amen. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Look at that again. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Yes. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because He laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Amen. Now are you willing to do that? Amen. That's another hard pill to swallow. Lay down our life. Oh, we can't even sit beside one another <laughs> without griping and fussing and getting <laughs> and can't get along. And now God, you want us to do what? <laughs> Oh, y'all, come on. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but I still tell you it's the truth. It's the truth. We got a good church here. We got a good pastor. We got a good pastor's wife. We got good children of God here. We got good people here. We got a good church here. Most of all, you know what we got? We got God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man. I've been in some places. God's not there anymore. Yeah. Used to be. But they quit doing something that was necessary. Yes. He that abides in God abides in love. You want to abide in God? Then you know what we got to do. Skip down over to chapter 4, verse 7. That's We're going somewhere tonight, ain't we? Amen. Yes. We're going to learn us something tonight, too. Somebody's going to get that grudge out of them tonight. I know that because I know what God told me. Praise the Lord. Somebody here tonight, somebody in particular, you got a grudge against someone about something. Don't know how long it's been there. Don't know what it is. And then it ain't none of my business. But I guess it is, kind of, because God made my business when He told me. <laughs> Beloved, let us love. Everybody there, verse 7, chapter 4, 1 John. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. You know what He's saying? What did that say? Can somebody just phrase it up and tell me what it said? It said that if you don't have love, you don't have God. Right. What it said. <laughs> now about these three, the greatest of these is love. Try to get to heaven without it. Try to get there without hope or faith. But try even harder to get there without love. <clears throat> you know, I believe if you love somebody, you can forgive them. Right. I've got three children. One sitting here, and I don't know where my son's at tonight. I wish he was here too. And Kamara sitting back there. I love my kids. And I can tell you, there's been times that they agitated me. Can somebody say amen to that? There's been times that they have worried me. Can somebody say amen to that? Yep. There's been times that they just completely got on my last nerve. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. But amen. you know what? I can stand here tonight, raise both my hands to heaven, and say I love my children with everything inside of me. Amen. Why? I love them. What did I do? Did I keep on feeling harsh toward them? Did I keep on re holding on to resentment? Did I keep on thinking about, well, they hurt my feet? Oh, y'all heard that saying. So when they little, they step on your heart. When they get older, they step on your toes. <laughs> you know what we done, though? As parents. If I'm telling the truth, everybody raise their hand. As parents, what do we do? We forgive them. Yeah, we, do. we forgive them. You know why we forgive them? Because we love them. That's right. <laughs> love and forgiveness go hand in hand. Yes, it does. If you've got a child that you haven't forgiven, you know what? You need to. <laughs> you need to forgive them. Oh, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 11 said, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. <laughs> verse 20, skip down to verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he just told a lie. Yeah. That's what God said. If a man say that I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Wow. Now how can I say I love yeah. God and hate Eric? How can I say I love God and hate Sandra? How can I say I hate God and love and and, and, and 
or love God and hate Sister Rita, or, or Sister Hines, or Sister Shirley, or Sister Diane, or Sister Mavon. How can I say I love God Come on. and I hate people? Yeah. Something ain't right. Amen. I need some more of God. I need to get back in touch yeah. with the Holy Amen. Ghost. I need to get back in touch with the Word and with the Spirit of God. Can somebody say, man, I'm preaching to myself, y'all. Amen. You know, I'm I can't eat a good cook. I love to eat her cooking. But I think I can cook some things like gravy and biscuit. Well, I don't know. She cooks very good gravy and biscuit. <laughs> but sometimes my own cooking tastes pretty good if she's not around. <laughs> I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if a man say I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he say he loves God whom he hath not seen? Oh, that makes me want to shout. <laughs> Don't it you? Amen. Man. I mean, this Bible is true. And the commandments tell us the very two greatest commandments written. If you're a murderer, you're not going to heaven. Is that true? If you're a liar, if you're a thief, or if you do any of the things that the commandments say not do, you think you're going? I think not. So if you can't get there being up under the greatest two, how can you get there not doing the greatest? Because loving God's the greatest, and the second greatest is loving your neighbor as yourself, or the one sitting beside you, or the one down in Huntsville you got something again, or the one up in Nashville that you wish you'd never see again. Come on, brother. Come on now, y'all. Man. I heard somebody say one time, this is good preaching. Hey man, come on brother. I know what you're thinking. It was. They were doing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everybody's familiar with this. Yeah. Everybody's familiar with Amen. it. Amen. I bet you can almost quote it before you get there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is anybody, you understand what I'm saying, church? Man. God's building a church right here. And he's not building just any church. He's building a great grand church. And you know how he's going to do it? He's doing it through the people that are here. But you know what he wants us to do? We got to, how are we going to love a stranger if we can't love each other and come together every Wednesday night and every Sunday morning every Sunday night? Come on. Come on. How are you going to the, love the perfect stranger that you've never seen if we can't love each other? That's right. If I can't love Sister Shirley, how am I going to love somebody who just came through the door? If I can't love Brother Derek, who I've known for years, how can I love a total stranger? Come on, y'all. Reality is real. Let's get real tonight. Is that okay? That's right. I'm talking about love. we got to have it, y'all. God's building something. He's building a church right here. we got to hang on to one another. we got to share each other's burdens. When I hurt, you ought to hurt. When you hurt, I ought to hurt. When each one of us hurts, we all ought to hurt. When I was up here this morning, I was hurting so bad, Sister Sandra. Yes. But as the people began to come around me and pray a prayer of faith, also of faith, but also of compassion. Right. You yes. can feel when somebody cares enough, they really mean it, because God's going to do something about it. You can just say a little penny, any old prayer, and not really mean it from your heart, and not have no compassion or care whether your brother quits hurting or not. Nothing going to happen. Yeah. Come on. But you pray a prayer of compassion. Amen. You pray a prayer of faith and of compassion. You know what? There's not a, there's a whole lot of healing anymore. There's not a whole lot of compassion anymore. Come on. Come on. We need compassion, church. Yes. If you ain't got it, pray for it. Get closer to God and you'll get it. That's right. Yes, that's Woo! I said get closer to God and you'll get it. Brother Derek, catch your knees. Good. Good. Y'all remember the dinner we was having over here? I bet Brother Derek remembered it when I mentioned it. He walked past us and he was over there getting something to eat. Wasn't nobody around, but I think Penny and me and probably Sister LeBron. I don't, I don't know. I'm just being empty. But he walked by and he had him a plate. I was watching him fix his food over just eating, you know, just watching. He walked by there and he said, Phew, these are killing me. My heart broke. I felt his pain right here, Sister Sandra. And I know there was a lot of other people praying and we've been praying for a long time. But I just want to tell you something. Penny, I reached down there and I said, let me pray for you, Brother Derek. Reached down there and put my hands on his knees and Penny did too and we began to pray. It wasn't long after that. I said, Brother, how's your knees? They're not hurting me anymore. Amen. I'm telling you, we've got to have compassion one for another. 
We got to have love one for another. Ain't nothing going nowhere without it. Man. The atomic bomb is a powerful thing. Yeah. But it ain't got nothing on L O V E. Amen. Man. They say money makes the world go round. Uh uh. Love is what keeps the world going around. Yeah. Love. Bless me, Lord. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians says, Though I speak. Oh, I got to pull my coat off. I don't know why God wanted me to do that. I don't care. He said, Do it. I need to do it. Amen. It said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. No matter how great my words are, how good I can sing, how good I can teach, or how good I can preach, if I ain't got love, That's right. it's you just making a sound. Love. Anybody got a veil or something handy? I don't even know if this is going. Yeah. You hear that? Did you hear me preaching? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Without love, I should have just kept my mouth shut and came up here and Is that not what the Bible just said? Yep. Come on, y'all. Y'all looking at me kind of funny. Man. Isn't it the truth? It said, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not love, I'm nothing but just a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Verse 2, And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mystery, all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not love, I'm still not anything. That's saying a lot right there. That's a whole message you just told you that verse. Is that not right? Though I speak with the tongues of angels, have all faith, have the gift, have knowledge, have the understanding of prophecy, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, and don't have love, it don't do me no good. Yeah. Know what it said? Know serious. what it said? Verse 13, let's drop all the way back down there and I'll read that one. I thought quote will go. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Greatest of these is charity. What do we hear, Lord? <laughs> I know there's something. Bless the Lord. I had that mark for a reason. Maybe I did. Maybe I'll. One more place, y'all, and I'll quit. Go in Matthew chapter 6. I think that's the last thing we'll say it is. Bless you. I don't think it is, though. I'm going to take it back. Can I take it back? Is it too late to take it back? <laughs> Matthew chapter 5. I'm sorry. I had 6 at the top of the page. That always gets to me. I need to start looking at the chapter again. Chapter 5. Verse 38 says this. You have heard that it has been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Sometimes that's how I feel. I'll be honest with you. But I have to ask God to forgive me. None of us are perfect, are we? No. Amen. Did I read? Did I? Y'all look in chapter 5, verse 30. Hey. Matthew 5, 38. Amen. Bless the Lord. The other day I had to have Penny to preach to me a little bit. Man. Ain't it something? <clears throat> How God can talk to me. But sometimes He gets my wife after me. I won't listen. <clears throat> Tell you the truth, I'd rather have Penny after me than God, really, when it comes to something like that. Amen. Yes. I'm telling you, we're not careful. God can put some hurt on us. I was driving up the road the other day to deliver a load to a place up in Tullahoma. <clears throat> I don't mind telling y'all. Y'all probably don't know the dude no way. <laughs> it's a place called Wipsco, an envelope place up there. And there's this guy back there I've been delivering to him ever since I've ever worked for Lester. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he'll do when I walk in the door, <laughs> you ever had anybody do that? Didn't give him a chance to, to, didn't give you a chance to say nothing before he done barked at you. <laughs> They're like one of them little chihuahua dogs. <laughs> you walk in somebody's house, one of them little mean chihuahua dogs. Yeah. They don't give you time to make you mad. He's already mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get intimidated, Brother George, because of that little chihuahua dog. 
telling you, I want you my shoes up, man. Hey, man. <laughs> they'll bite them shoes till they fall off, man. That's what this guy was. <laughs> like a little shoe walker. Every man. time I walk in the door, I get out of the truck, man. Glory to God. Slam my door shut. <laughs> I hate to go in here. That's what I'd be thinking or saying. I'd say it out loud sometimes. I'd be walking upstairs. I hate to go in here. <laughs> you know what? This guy's going to burn. I always done it for years, sister. I'd to get so fed up with it. If he would just say, how you doing this morning, John? Or good morning. How are you? Are you having a good day? I think now I am. <laughs> you didn't bark at me. <laughs> Every time you can't find him, he's supposed to be in the shipping department. He may be over here on the other side of the plant hiding him. I know that's what he's doing, y'all. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but I go in there, man. Get mad on I was up, I was driving up there the other day, Sister Shirley. Can I talk to you? We well, driving up there the other day and took you a little shortcut, real old store, really narrow street, but I wasn't watching where I was going. Limbs in. <laughs> What I had in my mind, 